Howdy, I'm Daryl Bruffett. I live in College Station, Texas, and I started raising chickens in my backyard in the spring of 2020. Yeah, you guessed it, no surprise, they were a product of COVID-19. My wife went to the grocery store in late March and couldn't find any eggs to buy, and I just kind of laughed and said, I can solve that problem, it won't be cheap, but we'll have all the eggs that we can eat and share some too. So that's how the Bruffett chicks came to be. I currently have eight hens that are in production. I have a total of 10. I have two point of lay pullets that'll start producing in late February or early March. Interesting story about my little pullets. They were a byproduct of a broody chicken that I had named Billy. All Billy wanted to do in late August and early September was just sit on the eggs that everybody else had already produced. So I reached out to a friend of mine at Texas A&M, Dale Hyatt. He's in the poultry science department. I said, Dale, what do I do about my broody chicken? He kind of laughed and he said, well, he said, let's let her have some fun. So he brought me over a clutch of 10 fertilized eggs and Billy sat on them for nearly three weeks. On the 19th day, I had chicks that started hatching out. I had a total of seven. I had five cockerels and two pullets. I gave the roosters away and I kept the pullets. And as I said, they're gonna start producing sometime in late February or early March. But it was really neat to see those little chicks come into the world. As for Billy, well, she's back to laying again. Now you probably wouldn't know it to look at me, but I'm at least a third generation chicken farmer. My mom and dad, Joe and Jim Bruffett, helped their parents with their chickens back in the Ozarks in Missouri when they were growing up as kids. My grandfather, Lon Bruffett, he was a commercial chicken farmer. My dad said he'd buy three or 400 straight run chicks every January from the Kinbaloo Hatchery in Mountain Grove, Missouri. Traditionally, half would be cockerels and the rest pullets. They'd raise the roosters for meat, both for their table and to sell to people. The young pullets would lay eggs after about 20 weeks, and they'd sell them off as grade C eggs. My grandfather, Ernie Lobb, had a much bigger commercial chicken operation. He would buy several thousand straight-run chicks every year and do the same thing. Sell off the roosters that they didn't eat and keep the pullets for their egg production. Now, he candled his eggs and was able to sell them to stores as grade A eggs because the yolks didn't have any imperfections. I remember my grandpa Lobb's chicken operation. He had three big hen houses. There were chickens everywhere when you walked in there and I got to help out just a little bit when I was old enough. And now some 50 years later, I'm glad I got the itch to raise chickens so that I can <laughs> carry on our family chicken tradition. The fact that people share their ideas on the internet has made backyard coops like mine have an opportunity to have a much better design than some of the chicken wire and old shed coops you might have seen 20 or 30 years ago. I've got a family, a full-time job, so I don't have a whole lot of time to mess with my hens every day other than to gather eggs. So I've built in a lot of automatic features and redundancy, like the feeding tubes that I fill up every seven to 10 days. There are two accessible in the run and two in the hen house. There are also watering cups that are supplied from my trash can water barrel, and then a drinking bucket that is supplied by my water catchment barrel. Now you might ask, why two watering systems? Well, if one type of waterer fails, my girls have a backup because they could probably go a couple of days eating the food they've wasted on the ground, but they're gonna need water all the time. My chicken house design is four foot by eight foot. It's got a five foot high ceiling in the front and it's four and a half in the back. The slope helps with the water catchment. It also sits 32 inches off the ground, so I can roll a wheelbarrow up to the side and I can clean out the hen house as easy as possible. All I have to do is just rake it out. And I use pine shavings on the floor of my coop and they do a pretty good job of helping break down the chicken poop. Also, by using about four inches of pine shavings, I don't have to clean it out very often. But when I do, what makes it really easy to clean out is my double door design. An outside gate latch works well with it all closed up, but I leave the outside doors open about nine months out of the year or whenever the overnight temperature is gonna be above 60 degrees. 
So I double pinned the right side of the door with a pin inside on the top and outside on the bottom. There's also a cross pin that secures the two doors together for some added stability. I put a third pin outside of the lower left door and it works really well. All you have to do is remove four pins. The other thing I did was to double wire the door with half inch hardware cloth since it's open most of the time. One last thing about the hen house, having some square footage underneath is what keeps the feed tubes protected from the rain as well as the chickens when it starts raining. Because let's face it, chickens aren't that smart. They don't know how to get out of the rain. There are four roosting bars made out of two inch grapevine instead of two befores in the hen house and one in the run. I like the fact that the hen's feet are on bark because it's natural. It allows some air to get underneath them while they're on the roost. I've got a four inch step up for my four nesting boxes that separates the boxes from the coop floor. It also has front access for the egg gathering instead of top access like some people have. I just kind of think the front access makes the egg gathering a whole lot easier for everybody. Now, your eggs are the reason that you have chickens and there's nothing worse than breaking one as you're gathering it. Sometimes I've discovered that there's a cavity in my nesting box access door and the chickens will lay an egg in there. The problem is you don't know it until you open it and sometimes the eggs will crack. So I put some plywood boards in those cavities to close them off and save my eggs from cracking that way. Security is something that we all appreciate and as chicken overseers, it's our responsibility to make sure that predators can't get to our birds. I took a lot of care in making sure that varmints can't get in my hen house or the run. I put down the two foot predator barrier that a lot of people suggested, which should discourage digging under my walls. There's also half inch hardware cloth on the wind vents, which gives me a lot of confidence that our hens are gonna be safe against raccoons, possums, foxes, hawks, snakes, and anything else that gets hungry for chickens. The automatic coop door is opening back up and our coop queen, Regina George, says it's time for her to go. She's tired of hearing me talk. Yes, we have named all of our 10 chickens. Regina George is the ringleader. And of course, she's one of the mean girls. We also have Karen, Katie, Gretchen, and Janice. Our other hens are named Myrtle, Mary Jo, Joan Jett, Mrs. Potato Head, and Billy. Now besides my automatic chicken door opener, I've put in some other extras in my coop that we're gonna talk about on the next episode of the Bruffett Chicks on how it's done with Daryl. I appreciate you watching. Give me a like if you enjoyed the video or saw a concept that you like. You can also hit subscribe and be notified with more updates on the Bruffett Chicks on my channel here. Chickens have kind of become my passion right now, but I'm gonna try to help you figure out how you can do a lot more things by yourself and save some money along the way. You can also hit me up with an email on how it's done with Daryl at gmail.com. See ya. Whoa. Howdy chicken farmers and YouTubers out there. I just wanted to update you on the Bruffett chicks on how it's done with Daryl. My videos that I produced back in January, I haven't been able to upload until now because YouTube kept flagging my intro music. They said it wasn't copyright free. Well, I was able to find someone to work me up some copyright free music. And if you need some help there, contact David Jack Skinner at davidjackskinner.com and tell him the Bruffett Chick sent you and he'll be able to work you up something really cool like he did for me. I also want to thank my coworker and Sam Houston State buddy, Steve Carmack, for all the help with my intro and my graphics. As for an update on the Bruffett Chicks, well, all my chickens are now in production. I've got nine or 10 eggs that they deliver every day for me. We've got more videos to post and we'll see you soon.